Hey everybody, I wanted to walk you through what it took to design the landing gear, the main landing gear, not the nose landing gear, but the main landing gear on a C-130 radio control airplane. So as I dive into this, this is going to be kind of a generic video, but I just want to take you through all the parts and pieces. My biggest goal was to make it so the landing gear would be easy to take in and out of the aircraft. So if I needed to do any maintenance or repair on it, it was very simple. So I created hard blocks in the fuselage so that um, basically mounting plates could be screwed in that had the landing gear attached to it. So in this kind of a mess of a picture, in the center, and this was a design I started with that I actually ditched, but in the center is a servo that would touch contactors when it rotated the cam, and that would run the two gear blocks up and down lead screws. At the top, it would have limit switches to stop the travel, and at the bottom, it would have limit switches. The left ones, which were the orange wires, were over-traveled, so if for some reason it passed the primary limit switch, it would stop. I also had fuses in this so it wouldn't blow anything up if something shorted. Here was the uh, mounting plates that I mounted to all the apparatus to so that this could be actually screwed into the landing gear block. And uh, <clears throat> I really like that. So here you'll see the landing gear block, what I call the block. This is what you would screw what we just saw in the previous picture too. So this way I could take everything in and out really easy. I mean, I just love the way this design worked. So the shroud or the cover here that covered the landing gear block, uh, it essentially was fiberglass and I used really little bitty screws to screw this on and off. They look like rivets actually. So what we're gonna see here in this video starting right here was my first attempt at making my own lead screw. And actually the lead screws worked okay, but it was the nut that ran up on ran up and down this. And this was a test nut right here. It ended up being problematic. So I ended up ditching it and going to uh, McMaster Car and buying, buying real lead screws. And um, the lead screws from McMaster Car actually worked perfect. So here you'll notice I bought some what's called window channel. And that window channel is what the gear block would slide up and down uh, in it. I machined the gear blocks out of nylon six. So I used my uh, mill to basically mill down some parts and pieces that would slide up and, up and down those tracks. Uh, the motors on the top were 12 volt hobby motors I bought from eBay. Here's a better picture of the gear block that I machined. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see the lead screw there. And I had lead screw nuts inside of that so that when the lead screw turned, it would run that gear block up and down the track. And I machined basically a outer block that held the landing gear uh, strut. And that's what the landing gear strut fit in was a small circle, actually the 5 8 inch hole in the middle of that block right there. So as I started to assemble all these, alignment was one of the most important things. And also, I needed to create a coupling between the electric motor and the um, jack screw. And I had to use thrust bearings up there because these did put a lot of thrust as they went up and down. The picture on the left you can see is where I did a mock-up of the nylon 6 pressing in the 5 8 inch um, tubing, which was basically the uh, landing gear strut. Here's a picture of me testing, uh, test fitting the wheels on it. And uh, at this point, I thought I had a really good design, but the servo motor that turned everything really become problematic. So I'm gonna dive in here really deep on how all this works. So if you look at where the up over travel uh, limit switch is and the down over travel, those were in case my primary limit switches failed. I didn't wanna put a load on the motor or burn anything up. I did have some fuses in this, so if there was a dead short, it would pop, blow the fuses instead of setting something on fire there. Um, this system actually worked really good. It's just the problem with that cam in the middle was that sometimes it would um, activate the um, limit switches in a way that if the other limit switch was struck, it had, had about a tenth of a second of a dead short. So I needed to figure out how to do it a little bit differently. And here was the first time it actually sat on its legs for me to do some load testing. I was able to put 150 pounds inside the fuselage which was an absolute boatload of weight to test and see um, if everything stayed together. 
So then I decided to redesign the whole thing, and a friend of mine created a microprocessor that had drivers on it that gave me basically an electronic controller, which had a whole bunch of different inputs and stuff on it. This design is what ended up being in the finished aircraft, and it absolutely worked perfect. But I've got a friend, his name is Berger de la Pena, and he does uh, controllers for me. So here's a picture of the controller. And if you look on the right, you can see where there were servo leads. Some of those were up travels, down travels, uh, the motor um, power from the drivers. And then on the left-hand side, you can see where the actual motor leads went to power the motors. Now, when I first got this and I started to decide how to wire it up, it took a lot of time to figure out how I really wanted to place this in the aircraft and how I would get it to, you know, actually fit onto that gear block that held all the electronics and everything on it. So here's a picture of me basically starting to figure out how I was going to wire it. You can see the servo lead going into it. That was from my landing gear switch on the receiver. And then the other green wires are limit switches and the red wires in the back are motor uh, wires. So here was the first time that I was actually um, activating it and running it and seeing how it worked. So um, it worked really good. One of the unfortunate things was once I got this to work really good with the new lead screws, I didn't get a lot of video. So here in this video are the old jack screws with the new controller in it. And as you can see it going up and down here, um, and here I'm taking a heat gun and checking the temperature of the drivers because this was the first time I ran it with the actual wheels on it to see how much the drivers, the heat increased on it. And uh, I did a lot of testing on these landing gears, folks. I mean, these these things took two or three months to build. Here's it being run without the wheels on it. And I wanted to check what the driver temperature was. And I think the other one was like 85 um, uh, Celsius. And here it was 77 Celsius. Unless I had it set on Fahrenheit. I might have had it set on Fahrenheit. I don't remember. Um, <clears throat> maybe if I show it here, we can read what it was. Yeah, I can't tell if that was Fahrenheit. That's 77.7, .7, so it doesn't matter. But these just work so beautiful. But the problem was is that on those big lead screws there, the ones I made myself, the nuts just didn't work right. Here it is going up. Now, there was an extra channel on that driver that would run a servo to close this outboard door. So that outboard door was not done mechanically. It was done off a servo. And I tell you, everybody, this works so sweet once I started getting it dialed in. Here's another picture of it going up and down. Now, the inside door had a spring, and it would run against a little bumper that was on the gear strut, and the uh, outboard door was on a servo. And I did a lot of load testing. I actually dropped this entire airplane from six inches off the ground with a 100-pound weight in the fuselage, and these wheels held up fine. Now, here's an interesting video. You can see the blue lights that popped on on the front of the airplane. Those are telling me the motors are running. With those blue light squad, it tells me it hit all the uh, limit switches. And then when the white lights come on here, it's coming down. When all those white lights went off, it meant it hit all the limit switches. I needed to have enunciator lights to make sure that my limit switches were being struck right. Here's the airplane right before it got its final paint job and me doing some final testing of the wheels. And um, I mean, the retract's going up into the uh, fuselage, right? I actually set the fuselage on a treadmill and set it as fast as I could go and was um, raising and lowering the landing gear, then setting the fuselage on it just to see if there was any shimmying. And on a treadmill going like 15 mile an hour, it never shimmied. And I know I'm a nerd putting it on a treadmill, aren't I? But I tell you, this was so rewarding how well these worked. I mean, it just worked beautifully. I've had a lot of people reach out and ask me if I'd make them landing gears for C-130s. I haven't completely written off the idea of doing it. Maybe one day I will do it. Um, right now I'm too busy. But uh, these landing gears turned out just beautifully, everybody. I just absolutely loved it. So, as you can see, um, I actually had an LED light in there, too, that um, is placed where the real C-130 had its light. So that's pretty much this video, everybody. I wanted you all to kind of see what I did here. Hope you enjoyed it, and you all have an absolutely fantastic day, and rock on.